What's cracking everybody? Zerafel Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Badly content. And not only am I Zerafel Rose, the mastermind, but I am also your weatherman, your 100% locked and loaded, guaranteed correct weatherman, going to give you the forecast for the Weather Cup. Now, remember that the Weather Cup is an Ultra League Cup for 2,500 CP or lower Pokemon, so there's going to be a mess of XLs in here. There's going to be four different types allowed. That is going to be the Fire, Water, rock and ice types so anything that has those types is eligible in the cup and already even before the rankings were up i called this that credilly is going to be an amazing core breaker in this cup it's ranked number one both as a shadow and a non-shadow um and because of the grass and rock coverage it has it can hit this entire meta for basically neutral or super effective damage so it already slots in as an amazing safe swap or a closer going to be able to take things out pretty simply here and has a ton of play against this whole meta. You can already see Ludicolo is going to be neutral damage, and that's everything else takes super effective. Swampert don't like the grass. Um, Abamaso doesn't like rock. There's so much play for Cradillion in this cup, it's insane. And it has to be a Hundo level 50 XL in order to compete at its best. So, uh, hope you have a Hundo Cradillion that you can make, because uh, those XLs are not exactly easy to come apart. Come up uh, come across and Maggie is completely in agreement with me and that's totally annoying and if you don't have a Cradilly, that's okay too uh, Obama Snow would probably be the next best thing and those two happen to be on this page I'm covering the grass types in this first page here so that's literally going to be three things right so the grass types in this meta there's literally three it's Obama Snow, Cradilly, and Ludicolo now Ludicolo is going to function at its best as a Razor Leafer you could run it with Bubble and it's uh, charge moves it beats all the other water types but doesn't really do so well against things like Obama Snow. Blaziken can take it out because if it's running Razor Leaf. Um, Cradilly is able to take care of it because once again, you know, running Razor Leaf is not going to be able to keep up with the amount of damage that Cradilly can pump out. And then uh, Alola Ninetales can also take care of it because, again, Ice type is uh, going to be able to deal neutral damage and it's going to be able to out damage the Razor Leafs from, from Ludicolo. It's just not, not cutting it, man. So... We've got the other two, though, the big ones, Cradilly. The main things that you're going to use to counter Cradilly, and even then, they're kind of risky, right? Uh, Ninetales and Abomasnow are solid because they can outpace the Cradilly by a mile, but the Ninetales and the Abomasnow both share the fact that they're weak to rock, so you have to be able to shield those stone edges that come from the Cradilly before they can get you, uh, you know, d just deleted, because the stone edges hurt a lot. Um, and Blaziken is definitely one of the hardest counters, I think. Now, yes, you're dealing neutral damage back with the Stone Edges, but it has counter and it has fire as a quick fire move in that it has Blaze Kick. And it is just Blaziken is going to be one of the most common um, things to beat Cradilly in this cup, I feel. Polyrath is also a good one because the dynamic punch does super effective damage back to the Cradilly. So you are able to get to those dynamic punches pretty quick with Mudshot. Should be a good way to beat Cradilly in this meta. Now, Cradilly can easily beat the likes of all the almost all the water types minus, you know, Polyrath. Um, and it can also take out Regirock because it does get to the grass move very quickly and grass knot. And um I mean, yeah, and you're not running Bulldozer Return on this thing, but this thing is, it, it, it's going to be out there. I'm actually working on mine. I'm almost done with it. I'm like maybe 10 XLs away, and I've got some stashed away in my trade tag that I'm looking to distance trade in the next week. So hopefully I'll have it ready, and it'll be it'll be interesting because I've been working on that thing for quite a while. Was for Ultra League as I'm factions in Ultra League, um, but uh, <laughs> haven't been able to use it because it's not done. And then Obama Snow. She's adorable. Um, Obama Snow does beat the Cradilly, also beats the other waters pretty handily. And however, it doesn't quite take a liking to Samurott, gets destroyed by Blaziken and other ice types that can deal ice type damage back to it are going to be able to beat it because it's not going to be able to get those energy balls out quick enough to really threaten the XL Pokemon or some of these bulky other Pokemon that just, you know, outpace to super effective damage. It's, it, Abomasno is going to be really good. It's just not going to be unbeatable, obviously, because there are things that beat it. There are some XLs in this cup that we got to talk about, too. We'll get there. Uh, but just so you know, you know, this is the kind of expectations you might have for an Obama Snow Shadow or a regular Obama Snow. I would probably go for Shadow, honestly, if I'm playing one just because it's XL. The Shadow Boost will help it, and it's already pretty bulky in XL. So, um, But, you know, like I said, some of the obvious things, like the Polyrath, Blaziken, Alola Ninetales, Regirock can beat this one, whereas I think the uh, Shadow gets located by... Uh, no, Regirock beats them both, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically that. But... 
Speaking of the not rocks, right? We're talking about fire types next. So let's skip right into those. I don't even think I put Reggie Rock in the in the video, which was kind of a crime by me. Uh, but Blaziken is going to be the number one fire type in this meta. Um, having counter and blaze kick by itself is amazing, but having Brave Bird makes it really good coverage. So this could be again a really good safe swap. Could be a really good lead. Bill, go for a Brave Bird and dip. I think she agrees. She definitely agrees. Typhlosion comes in. Yes, I'm talking about you, you silly girl. Typhlosion is going to come in next. Um, it's not next on the rankings list, but it's here because it has Shadow Claw. It can also have Incinerate, and it's got Blast Burn and Solar Beam. So it's got really good coverage on this meta. Uh, once again, going to be able to hit just about most things except for other fire types for really solid damage. And having Shadow Claw allows it to deal neutral damage back to those fire types to give it some of a fighting chance against them. Um, speaking of fire types, though, we've got our town flame and arcanine now arcanine is on here because it has psychic fangs and that makes it really strong in the sims because it goes psychic fangs gets the bait with the shield and then lands the wild charge of course since the defense drop we're probably going to get obliterated by one that's how i feel when i get obliterated by a wild charge after getting baited by psychic fangs but <laughs> you're adorable you're supposed to be sleeping it's 12 30 in the morning you goof um but arcanine isn't is it's a sims thing it's not really going to be great in this meta because it just doesn't like the snarl wild charge psychic thing combo is amazing but it doesn't have the bulk to really keep up with a lot of things now i could be completely wrong it might be amazing shadow arcanine is totally like it's it's a very viable pick um but the problem here is that even though it's a fire type unless you're running fire fangs you're actually not going to do too great against you know other grass types especially credilly and i think that in this meta the ability to beat a credilly is going to be the most important thing and i don't think arcanine can do it so it definitely loses to credilly and it also loses to polyrath swampert and Topolfini. these are going to be like five of the most common things in the meta i think all nine tails will be out there blaziken will be out there and it's nice that it beats blaziken somehow um but it's just it's just too risky when your only way of doing any damage with arcanine is with wild charge honestly it's just not you'd have to run the fire fang version in order to be super you know super uh potent with it but anyway uh salazzle and uh, salazzle run here but no one's running an xl salazzle most people most people probably don't even have a salazzle for ultra league unless you just happen to hatch a bunch and just happen to get the female to evolve um i have one i've only ever gotten one and i don't even know if i want to build it yet but uh, Charizard and Talonflame are also on this list as the fire flying types that we've got. Um, obviously, we know Charizard has Dragon Breath, does very well against other things, has Blast Burn to obliterate things, and it has Dragon Claw to bait with. So it's a very strong Pokemon, very, very, fav uh, very good favorite po kind of Pokemon to play in a cup like this that is cheap to make and is going to be effective in other Ultra League formats, especially with Dragon Breath. Give it Blast Burn, Dragon Claw, and you're set to ro rock and roll against just about every other fire type in the meta. And then you've got Talonflame, which does a similar role, but it has uh, Incinerate, Flame Charge, Brave Bird, which is going to allow it to threaten shields on just about the entire meta, except for the rock types, which since rock is kind of a um, common... Um, it's a common... Uh, type in the meta you might not be looking to do so well with it because of the fact that rock just walls its entire move set so just be careful with that if you do decide to play your talent flame but anyway within the next group we've got the ice types looking at the ice types now the ice types here in this meta and i think i completely forgot about some of the rock types and that might be my fault so well i i think i forgot about them because i go into the water types after this and the first group was the grass types, but that's just because they're not necessarily grasses in the meta. Uh, well, they're not grass type allowed in the meta, but grass types in the meta. So that's what they're for. But ice types, right? So we've got the aforementioned bomb snow. We've already went over that. Reg ice is actually really spammy. Has lock on a blizzard and thunder. Now, I know that that sounds like a really weird move set, but think about Reggie steel, right? Has zap cannon and focus blast does just fine. So in a meta like this, you know, and with a charge move pool like this, Reggie Ice could really thrive in this meta if played correctly. Um, just unfortunate that it doesn't have Zap Cannon or any other low or, or another move that's lower energy. Like everything it has is straight nukes. So, I mean, you're going to have to pick and choose which ones you think are going to do best on this meta. But Thunder and Blizzard are a pretty good bet. You get Stab on the Blizzard and Thunder is just nukes things, right? So 
Speaking of things that get nuked by thunder, we got Lapras and Walrein, both serving similar uh, roles as ice type water types and able to hit the flying types if there are very there's not very many um, but also able to hit back against things like obama snow and are pretty bulky in their own right now i know wall ring just got a nerf to its ice school spear but honestly it's really not it's not that bad especially in ultra league where there's extra bulk that thing is still getting plenty of ice school spears before it goes down or it can hit you with an earthquake either way it's still good it's still going to get run people are going to use it because they've already got it built so why not uh low and sand slash is up here and I think that that's probably a pretty good and interesting pick. XL alone, Sand Slash can beat Cradilly. Why? Because it actually is resisting its entire moveset. And I think that's really important. If you have a XL alone, Sand Slash, look at the wins, right? Cradilly, Obama Snow, Nine Tails, and even Samurott. It does get clapped by Polyrath, Swampert, Reggie Rock because it probably lands Focus Blast, uh, Lantern, Topofini, things that resist the Ice Punch, but. The meta things that it beats are actually really huge, and that's why I think that it could be a really sneaky pick in this meta as something that could do really well. I don't have the dust to invest in one, but if I did, I definitely would try it because it looks really interesting to me. And just rolling down the list here, we got Lapras is going to be able to beat the likes of Regirock. Does beat the aforementioned Alolan Sand Slash, can beat Gyarados, Tentacruel, but loses to Cradilly, Blaziken kicks it in the rear end and puts it back in its Pokeball. Obama Snow is going to be able to land that Energy Ball, and the Swampert and Topofini probably just, you know, Swampert is just out, you know, getting to that Earthquake, and then Topofini probably just outbulks it. Um, and then I didn't put this on the list here. I have limited slots on my page, and I have completely forgotten, but not Alola Ninetales absolutely deserves a mention here. Um, Kingdra, Polyrath, like most of the waters it can beat because um, it has that spammy weather ball, can charm. Actually, this one's running charm, so it has the ability to charm. You could also run a Powder Snow variant, but most people nowadays, I guess, just run charm because charm is kind of OP. Um, obviously, it loses to Regirock, but the fact is, is that all nine tails can charm through a Cradilly, so that's kind of important to remember. Maybe that's going to be something that you look to when you're building your teams. Um, but it does have issues with getting through things like Regirock, Topofini, Swampert, Blaziken being a fire type will still be able to do plenty of damage with Blaze Kick. Lantern is also a problem for it. Um, but for the most part, I mean, you know Lola Nine Tails from Open Ultra League. It's really bulky. It does its job very well. And I'd rather spend some time talking about something more interesting like Articuno and Roras because Articuno, if it lands the Hurricane, can beat Cradilly. Now, this is all Sims stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean your game is going to play out this way, but it's important to note that landing the Hurricane is going to allow you to beat a um, Cradilly, even though the Cradilly could probably one-shot you with a Stone Age, which is already on its own kind of sad. But um, it does lose to Charmolo and Ninetales. You know, anything that has a hint of anti-flyer to it or resists the ice damage altogether is going to have a pretty good time against Articuno, so be careful with that. But, you know, Polyrath, Swampert, Obama Snow, and Cradilly are pretty important wins for Articuno, so if you have one built, not a bad time to you know, roll it out and give it a shot. And then the last one I want to check out on this page is Aurorus, because Aurorus has a very interesting moveset. It got the recently buffed Ancient Power, it's got Ice Weather Ball, it's got Powder Snow, so it's a super spammy Pokemon. However, the Rock and Ice Typings don't really do it any favors. However, it does definitely make it a much better pick against things like Talonflame. Um, it beats Articuno, Obama Snow, Ninetales, it beats Cradilly, it beats Gyarados. So those are some really important wins for uh, Aurorus here. And it also loses, however, to pretty much all of the water types. And Shadow Cradilly is going to be able to deal super effective damage enough to take it out. Whereas I guess the non-shadow doesn't, but overall I think I'd rather build a non-shadow Cradilly. The bulk is more important, I think, um, because the shadow damage doesn't really do much for it, from what I understand. Um, so I think Aurorus is going to be a really interesting pick as well. If you've got one that you can build, I think it would be a really fun pick. It's super spammy, has the ability to hit with that rock damage, a very good anti-wall rain, if I may say so. It also has access to Thunderbolt too, so if you want to use that as your coverage move, you know, that works too. But um, most of the other ice types in the meta are kind of nondescript. There's not really anything super important here. Like no one, I mean, if you have an XL Frost last, I think that would thing would be pretty freaking sweet. Um, but there's, you know, obviously some things that it can't really handle because of it's not really hitting very high CP. It gets to uh, 2306 as a hundo at level 50. So 
XLK strongly recommended, according to PV Poke. Thanks for your work, man. I appreciate everything that you do. You make these videos possible for all of us, and you just deserve a shout out in every video, but I can never remember to do it. So thank you, Mr. PV Poke. Man, you're the man. Um, but yeah, Frostlass is, is not tangling with the water types for the most part. It has a few that it can, but for the most part, no, not really. But anyway, so let's move on. Um, so the next two pages are all dedicated to water types. So what I want to do here is I want to take a minute and I want to talk about some of the rock types before we move on to the waters because I forgot to do dedicate a page to the rock types. Um, but that's probably because there's only like a couple rock types that even matter in this meta. Reggie Rock is going to be one of the important ones. Um, has a split with the Cradilli and Shadow, uh, non-Shadow. Loses to most of the waters, can beat the grass... Obama Snow beats the absolute pants off of Alone Nine Tails because the Stone Edges come out so quickly, and then Gyarados does take super effective damage for his flying typing, so it's not going to be able to handle uh, Reggie Rock in a straight fight. However, give it some energy, or maybe even give Waterfall to it. Maybe you're in a better spot. Um, so Reggie Rock is worth looking at. We already talked about Cordelia. Terrakion with the Double Kick, Rock Slide, and Sacred Sword. This thing is worth noting. All of the beasts, or the, 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 the swords, I should say, the Swords of Justice got buffed with getting double kick this last season. Now, it went under the radar, but they did update the blog post with it. I completely missed it in my video, but they all got double kick, and that makes them extremely potent in Ultra League. Terrakion is no exception. Double click, or double, double click, double kick, rock slide, and sacred sword. Let that sink in for a minute. That's the same kind of coverage that Met Machamp has, the same kind of coverage that hits everything in the meta, in any meta as far as I'm concerned, um, except for uh, Nidoqueen, Queen, which isn't in this meta, for at least neutral damage. So once again, Terrakion could be an extremely interesting uh, way to combat the Cradilly. However, you have to be careful about taking super effective damage from the grass knots because of its rock typing but beats a bomb of snow can beat kingdra blaziken and lantern it can beat some really important things here um but it can't quite keep up with reggie rock and cradilly and some of the water types so you have to be careful with that with terrakion but everything else i mean barbarical is an interesting pick actually i kind of think barbarical is really interesting um I actually have to check my next page. I might have Barbarical on there already. So we'll talk about that in a minute because it is a water type, I believe. But um, it just it has a really diverse move set here. So we'll talk about it, I think, in a minute. Or I'll talk about it now, either way. Uh, but Stone Edge, Cross Chop, Grass Knot, like, that is a toolbox move set that you could fit any of those moves on and do well in this meta with. Um, it looks like Cross Chop and Grass Knot are going to be the preferred ones. But Stone Edge is just as good, too. And then you got Fury Cutter to be able to get that energy really quickly. So... Um, that's pretty much all the rock types in this meta that I really care about. Um, everything else is going to be spicy or interesting or just like, oh man, how hard can I counter this Talon Flame that I keep seeing everywhere, right? So, Hosunian Arcanine, I can't wait to run one of those things. Best boy, best boy. All right, but anyway, let's talk about water types, right? So, do the quick double, do the quick double take to get back so I remember how to timestamp this video correctly. Uh, water types. There's a ton of water types. Water is going to be not the most important type, but definitely the most um, accounted for. Most of these teams are probably going to be some form of double, maybe triple water, because there's just so many water types and so many different water types that fill certain roles. This page alone, you've got an anti-steel, an anti-fighter, an anti-flyer, anti-water. You've got an anti-psychic. You've got an you've got an anti-steel ice. You've got every thing you could need it's a toolbox of water types right so let's talk about some of these now swampert is the obvious one here everybody knows about swampert everybody has a swampert swampert can just get destroyed by cradillion and obama snow but takes care of a lot of other meta threats because of its spamminess because of its ability to shoot off earthquakes so it's it's absolutely you know not a bad thing to run however if you're not careful you could get taken by surprise by somebody running a Cradilly or a Mama Snow. Those things are going to be in the meta everywhere because grass types are going to be amazing because they cover three of the four types for the most part, um, at least as far as their moves go. So Obama Snow is not going to cover you know rock types or fire types as well, but um, I mean, it can still, or ice types, I should say, but it can still deal damage back to them, which is important. Um, Tapu Fini is super good in this meta as well. As a fairy type and a water type, it gains a lot of nice wins over even its own fellow water types against other fairies like Ninetales. But against the likes of 
you know, Jellicent, even Cradilly, Abomasnow, Swampert, it can't quite hold on because that water damage or water gun damage isn't going to be quite enough to be able to take it out. Plus, you have to deal with the fact that you only have a Surf and Moonblast. You could run other moves on the top of Fini. Um, you could run it with Ice Beam or you could go crazy and run it with Hydro Pump. You could try a Hidden Power, which I really don't recommend because it's really bad. Um... But typically, you're going to want to run Surf and Moonblast. Now, I don't mind not running Moonblast in this meta because Ice Beam could have more utility. But overall, Moonblast is probably safer. It's got stab damage. It means it's going to do more damage because it's the same type of attack bonus. And uh, it's just going to have more utility with Moonblast, I think. So Samurott's super interesting. Can beat um, the Shadow Cradilly. Can beat the Abomasnow Snow because it lands in that Mega Horn. Uh, Blaziken gets just completely clowned on because it gets outpaced by it. Regirock as well. Swamper is not going to be able to keep up with those Hydro Cannons because it has to land the Earthquake in order to take it out. Um, and then you, can, you get Polyrath and Tapu Fini, Kingdra. Like those things are going to be able to beat it because they're either going to outbulk or wall the moveset of the, uh, of the Sand Rock. But XL Lantern, if you have an XL Lantern. I need an XL Lantern. I don't even have one that I can build, much less have the XLs for it. So that's going to be a long-term project for me. But it can beat a lot of the other water types because of Spark, and it can beat a lot of the other... Uh, it can beat some of the ice types because having Surf means it's much more viable overall in the meta because not only does it get a good bait move to deal with, you know, being able to land Thunderbolts, it just has a reliable source of water damage in general. Before, it just had Hydro Pump. So now that it has Surf, it has more spammy, more... Uh, damage capabilities more consistent so you know lantern on its own is just amazing in any meta that's going to be in now so you have to be you have to be ready for it and you might as well build one at this point because i mean everyone else probably will i hope we get chin chow back in an event sometime so i can try and do distance trades with some of my long time or long distance friends at some point if we ever meet up which may or may not ever happen i don't know but anyway i'm gonna try and do it so uh, Tentacruel slots in here is another interesting water type. Got the recent addition of Scald, so just like Lantern it is going to be able to have a more consistent water damage output. Scald having the ability to potentially lower the attack of the opposing Pokemon that it hits, and gets clowned on by Swampert. Lantern doesn't really care. For, uh, it doesn't really care too much for Swampert. Sand Slash is resisting the damage that it puts out, and then Kingdra just the Dragon Breath damage from Kingdra is oppressive. And I actually like Kingdra a lot in this meta too, but. It can destroy Ninetales and Tapu Fini. So both of those are very strong fairy types. So if you see a person running double fairy, got a Tentacruel. Have fun, man. Uh, Bomb of Snow because it takes super effective damage. So Tentacruel looking really sneaky good. And I wish I had the Stardust to build mine because I have the XLs for it, finally. But uh, definitely don't have the Stardust right now. And then Jellicent. Jellicent is going to be a really important XL to keep your eyes on because it beats so many things except for the grass types that we have in this meta. But, you know, it can beat Ninetales, it can beat Swampert, it can beat Abomasnow, it can beat Regirock, it can beat... Crid it gets no, it loses to all those things. What am I talking about? It's 12.50 in the morning, y'all. I'm reading the wrong list. It loses to Cradilly, Ninetales, Swampert, Abomasnow, and Regirock. But it can beat Blaziken because it hardwalls. The Pokemon itself with the counters and blaze kicks not doing anything. It has to land a Brave Bird, which is not going to be an ideal situation to be in. And then you have uh, Polyrath, Tentacruel, Samurott, Topofini all go down to the Jellicent because the Shadow Ball damages just so much. And if you can somehow bait them with a Bubble Beam, uh, that makes it even better for you because you're taking a lot less damage. Uh, the two polys here in the meta, um, Polyrath is going to be able to have a lot of diverse uh, coverage with Scald and Dynamic Punch. So that's going to allow it to hit against the ice, the rock, the water, and the fire. So it's going to be able to hit against every type of Pokemon in this meta, at least for neutral once again, at least on the uh, on the surface. I'm sure there's some Pokemon like, you know, Tapu Fini do resi does resist the entire moveset of, of Polyrath. But aside from that, you got Ninetales, which will charm me down. Lantern can easily tank dynamic punches like boss you get swampert and kingdra that outpace and do heavy fast move damage so polyrath is going to be a good core breaker i think but it definitely has some things it loses to you have to be careful if you're in a very very dense part of the meta and then polytoad we all know polytoad super annoyingly spammy has the weather balls has the access to earthquake and blizzard so it has the ability to hit back with big nuke damage against some of the meta um 
but you know it beats the pants off of just about all the fire types because that weather ball damage is just so oppressive and so spammy that most fire types just don't have a chance against it and then um it even outpaces the likes of swampert can land an earthquake against tapu fini or polyrath and take them out but it cannot out damage the charm from alola nine tails the samurai if it lands the megahorn is going to be pretty good because it's also doing neutral with the fury cutters and credilly we all know you know it, it, it's not happening. Cradilly's going to just destroy the little froggy. And Obama Snow as well uh, resists the entire moveset. Or if it's running Blizzard, it does take neutral from the Blizzard. But even then, I don't think that Kato's. So, um, so that's going to be this entire page of water. So let's check out the next page of waters. Um, we've got Blastoise, which is a XL Pokemon that is not bad. Like... Blastoise, I love Blastoise, but it just, I built one and it's kind of underwhelming. I know people have used it. I know people who can use it and that do well, use it well. Um, but Blastoise has Water Gun as its fast move, so just like Tapu Fini. And then it can use Hydro Cannon, which is really nice, really quick, spammy move, even if it's if with uh, water, gun, or water Gun. And then uh, you have Skull Bash or Ice Beam as your charge moves of choice. Uh, the likes of any water type will wall the move set if it has Ice Beam. Skull Bash is a nice neutral hitting move. But you have to remember that something like a uh, uh, Cradilly, which is not what we want to deal with, uh, or Jellicent can completely wall this Pokemon as well. So just be cautious of that. If you're going to play your Blastoise, try and team build around it better. And you don't have to worry about that problem as much. But Kingdra, I want to talk about Kingdra because Kingdra is an old favorite of mine from the old Ultra League days when we were running like Empoleon Double Dragon, which, spoiler alert, um, Empoleon's on this list too. So Kingdra covers and pulling out really nicely too um at least for the most part right so kingdra has octazuka and it has outrage so it's got the ability to hit for huge damage as well as potentially debuff the attack of something by two stages just by hitting it with an octazuka which everybody probably knows how frustrating that can be um especially on the other end of it but we have uh wins against most of the water types it can out damage the cradilly which is huge because the grass type damage is uh resisted by the dragon typing so it's all neutral damage and the grass types low nine tails ludicolo and blaziken those all will out damage the the um kingdra but that's also assuming they don't hit get a debuff if you get a debuff on anything it almost flips a matchup all by itself so gyarados i think is a really nice safe swap in this meta Really only gets walled by the fairies. Cradilly can uh, you can you can you can take Cradilly if it has Dragon Breath and Aqua Tail. Like that's a spammy enough move set. You're probably not going to be able to get past it because you have to basically shield everything. <laughs> I don't think it's a winnable matchup um, for Gyarados against Cradilly. But like you're you're getting out those anti you know Dragon Breath users. So you could run something like um, Gyarados and Kingdra backline with an Empoleon in the lead, and you can do okay with that. I mean, there's not really, you know, anything wrong with that, because again, the way that the meta is so condensed with these four typings that are allowed, that would basically be like an Empoleon double dragon, except instead of Dragonite, you've got Gyarados, which is totally doable. Um, and speaking of the Empoleon, though, that does slot in here as well empoleon is a little bit further down though at number 41 but it's a reliable pokemon and depending on the amount uh things you see in the meta maybe you're not seeing as many swamp birds or reggie rocks i mean even reggie rock you could probably two shield through cradilly i imagine you could probably two shield through uh obama snow as long as you shield the energy ball you're fine because you deal super effective damage back with a drill pack and samurott is completely walled but I assume that the Mega Horn damage or the Hydro Cannon damage is, is too spammy for it. So that's probably why it's a win here for, excuse me, for the Samurott. Um, but it's able to beat Blaziken just barely and be able to out damage it with the Waterfall damage. It's going to wall Tapu Fini completely, which allows it to hit it with those drill packs and barely take that matchup. Shadow Cradilly probably doesn't appreciate the uh, amount of damage that Waterfall does, so that's probably why that's a loss. Uh, Obama Snow, Shadow takes the drill peck, and Ninetales gets completely walled by Empoleon, hands down. And Empoleon's just been a reliable Pokemon for most Ultra League formats, so you've probably already got one built, makes it really easy to use. Um, and speaking of things that you probably already have built, I can guarantee you that a Pelipper is probably not one of them. Um, where is that Pelipper? Pelipper XL, you need a Hundo Pelipper to compete with, but it beats things like Polyrath, Blaziken, Swampert, Samurott, even Ninetales. If it tanks the uh, Hurricane, you can beat it. 
So that's a really good list of wins there. Uh, however, it can't really keep up with Obama. Snow gets completely shut down by Lantern. Cordilli is going to be able to Stone Edge it, even Grass Knot it as a bait, which is really, really strong. And Tapu Fini does take it out by uh, out bulking it. So there's a couple more Pokemon on this list that I wanted to highlight here. Galissapod just got Shadow Claw. However, its moveset is Exit or Aqua Jet, so it has some really bad charge moves. But it beats other waters because it resists all the moves from things like Swamp or Ludicolo. It can only do neutral with the with the It can only do neutral with its razor leaf damage, and you're hitting back with super effective damage from the uh the X scissors. And then Polyrath also gets completely walled here. But you've got things like Cradilly hitting you with the stone edges, Tapu Fini is walling most of your move set, as is Ninetales, Kingdra, Samurott. Those things are all going to be able to outbulk, outpace, or do more damage then, because those charge moves are really weak on uh, on Golisopod. But still an interesting pick if you've got one built, or even then, they're not that cheap, they're, they're not that expensive to make if you've got a Wimpod with reasonable CP to it. It might be, it might just evolve right up to Ultra League at that point. Oh, she's so sleepy. That's all right, baby. We're almost done. This is the last page and we're going to be done. Uh, Barbarical is going to be the last one we're going to talk about today because Barbarical has a really good toolbox move set, like we were talking about earlier. Being able to get to Cross Chop, Grass Knot, and even Stone Edge in very little time thanks to Fury Cutter makes this thing very interesting. Um, gets a lot of good wins here, um, but some of the losses I think could be flipped, honestly, with correct shields, maybe some baiting, um, or just you know a little bit of an advantage things like obama snow could be definitely uh flipped i imagine um, but the other ones maybe not so much so uh, your mileage may vary if you've got one built once again it's going to be one of those things that interesting to play might be worth trying but let's talk about uh, a couple cores a couple safe swaps that you could use in this meta um taking straight from the wallower handbook here in great league Obama Snow, Jellicent, and the Ultra League Azumarill and Tapu Fini. This is a strong double core kind of team where your Obama Snow core is very well with both the water types in the back. So that'll be a team that I could definitely see someone running. You could also run it with the Cradilly in the lead as well, uh, or flip it, maybe run like Cradilly, Obama Snow in the back with a Jellicent or Tapu Fini in the front. Very solid sort of team choice there. Um, core is very well around both sides, and you just. You just have some strong Pokemon on that team. Not a lot of things that hard counter things like Obama Snow and Cradilly in this meta at all. Um, Charizard and Swampert, I kind of threw this one together as like a small, you know, time core. It really isn't like super meta, but the fact that these two can cover each other really well is something. Um, you just really have to be careful of Cradilly. I, like I said, like Cradilly is going to core break almost everything in this meta. So you either have to build for it or just deal with it. And this is, I put this core here as a specific example of something that Cradilly could easily core break, which is why it's sitting right next to them as a safe swap in that little cluster of safe swaps so um this things i like in this meta you know if you've got the xl pelipper it does make for a really good safe swap because the hurricane and weather balls make it really potent able to hit most of the meta for neutral damage or really threaten it uh gyarados same deal as pelipper super spammy move set has dragon breath to apply pressure only really gets walled completely by tapu fini every you know other thing and almost to a degree obviously nine tails but you know, that depends on you know whether the person's actually running those in the back or not. Uh, Blaziken, I think, is a really interesting Pokemon that could definitely look to either counter swap in on a Cradilly or something, or you could safe swap it and get shields with it because it's got Brave Bird. It's something's going to be afraid of it. And then Cradilly, like we said, everything in the meta just about takes uh, neutral or super effective damage except for the likes of Alolan Sand Slash. I think that might be the only thing in the entire meta that doesn't take some sort of neutral damage from it. But um, just as a quick aside at the end of the video here, we've got a patron discord that's popping off with awesome people in the community and I've got all kinds of teams cooked up for this meta, so if you're playing the Weather Cup or if you're playing any other cup in this season, because I do meta analysis for each of these, but I'm already looking at these metas well in advance with my patrons so that we can get our teams ready well before the metas even get announced or the rankings on PV Poke even come up sometimes. Um, so link in the description for that. Please check that out. Would love to have you in. It's a great little community, great place to be if you're looking to get better at PvP or you know maybe hit your next goal in, in GBL. So uh, you know, come check us out over there. And then in the description, I've also got a link to a Metify 
page that I offer coaching for PvP through that. So if you're interested in that as well, I'm happy to offer that service as well. But it's been 35 minutes of this video. I think that's more than enough. We're all ready to go to sleep. So we're going to go do that. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.